In today's episode, we're talking about your number one money block that's stopping you from becoming wealthy. What is it? Let's find out. And if you want to upgrade your money mindset, then click on the link www.millionairefoundations.com and watch my free training. Welcome, welcome. This is Girl Khan, your money mindset expert. And today we're talking about one of my favorite topics. And I call it your number one money block that stops you from becoming wealthy because it really is the number one block for majority of the people. Actually, everyone I've met, if you can fix this one block, I promise you, you will be miles and miles and miles ahead in your wealth journey. So what is this number one block? Well, the number one block that everyone has is their ability to see themselves wealthy. Yeah, you heard it right. It's you, your ability to believe and see yourself wealthy. And this comes from, and this comes from, you know, when I first uh, I first read about it in the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, where he dedicates a whole chapter to you believing in yourself, being able to see yourself being wealthy. And he's got this success self, um, the self confidence formula. He calls it a self confidence formula in his book, Thinking Grow Rich. But the essence is the same. And then it, I, it was I revisited that with um, with a book with Maxwell Waltz, his book um, Psycho Cybernetics. And if you haven't read the book Psycho Cybernetics, I highly, highly recommend you read that book. Absolutely fantastic and absolutely amazing. I revisited that book, but not um, cyber second uh, psycho cybernetics, but actually the book on sales uh, by by Maxwell Moss as well. Anyway, the point being, it, this is very very clear to me, and after now working with thousands and thousands of people, that unless you can see yourself being wealthy, you will never be wealthy. So you have to work on your self image. This is absolutely imperative. So you need to be able to see yourself as wealthy. You need to, not superficially, not in the artificial way that a lot of these so-called gurus tell you and so forth. You need to actually see yourself as a wealthy person. You need to you know, have a true image of yourself in whatever level that you want to grow to. So if you want to have a seven-figure business or an eight-figure business or even nine or ten-figure business, you have to actively uh, you know, uh, believe that you can get there and you'd see this image of yourself that you are there. Now, Maxwell Waltz makes it very clear in his book that unless your image is there, your self-image is able to comprehend what you're trying to manifest, you will never get there. You will always cause self-sabotage. Now, of course, there are, this is it's a simplification to say you, you need to have the self-image there. You there. This is your number one block, but you can't directly, you can't falsify this. You can't, well, in, in a way, I suppose you can. I suppose, you know, this is one of the techniques that Dr. Joe Dispenza uses. He gets you to ignore everything else and just imagine that you are living from the future self. That's exactly what he's doing. He's you're, in, in, trying to increase your self-image. Now, is it possible to do it this way? Absolutely. Dr. Joe Dispenza has tons of testimonials to prove that you can do it. The problem is it's very, very slow right? So you need to be doing this meditation and this I I imagining from the future self for months and months. And for most, a lot of people, it's for years and years. And things do begin to shift if you are consistent with the practice and if you do this for a long enough period. However, if our goal is to have this self-image, then first of all, work on it. Understand that you saying, just reading a few affirmations and trying to falsify this belief that I believe I can be a seven-figure earner, I believe I can be a seven-figure earner, isn't going to cut it. You have to believe it from the heart. And in order for you to believe from the heart, you need to remove your limiting beliefs, which stop you from actually accepting that self-image about you. Does it make sense? So in essence, the number one block is your self-image, but there's so many things behind it. So the umbrella is you need Need to have you've got this block that you cannot actually believe that you can be a seven eight or nine or ten figure earner but in order for you to accept that you can there may be a number of niggly beliefs that you have to overcome these negative beliefs now these could be coming from your childhood from your parents it could be from your inner child from your from the teachings you had it could be from traumas as a young adult as a teenager so forth there could be various factors leading into this 
you know, this belief that you're not able to be a wealthy person, but they're all feeding the same thing that you, this image of yours, which is keeping you small. So you need to expand your image. And if you have difficulty accepting your ability to be seven, eight or nine or 10 figure earner, then you have to understand there must be something holding you back. There must be a limiting belief there or there must be a trauma there. Now, my experience of working with hundreds, actually thousands and thousands of people now, it's never, the belief doesn't just pop out from nowhere is usually associated with trauma. Now, you can have some small beliefs which are handed down to you from your parents and it could be generational because they're their grand your grandparents had it and their parents had it and their parents had it. But a lot of the time, if it's a really strong belief, it's, it's connected to a trauma. So you the parents had a belief that led them to go through a trauma and you would experience that trauma on, on a secondary basis, but you would experience it. So this belief begins ingrained in your energy because of a trauma attached to it. So when you go and do the inner work, you have to heal this trauma of yours before you can overcome that limiting belief. But the idea eventually is you should get to the point where you have this elf image of yours, that you are going, you know, you are whatever you want to be, you know, seven figure, eight figure, nine figure, 10 figure now. now you will realize at every level. So for example, if you are currently making multiple six figures and you want to become a seven figure owner, you will have to do this image work and you have to expand your self image to make yourself believe you are now a seven figure owner. Now, when you jump from seven to eight figures, you have to do the same when I work. So then you have to make yourself believe that you are now an eight figure owner before you become an eight figure owner. And then the same work applies. So when you go on to become a nine figure or 10 figure earner, you have to expand your image, self image and actually believe you are now a nine or 10 figure earner before you get there. So the image has to grow first, your ability to be wealthy and be having that kind of income come second. And this also works with not just having income, but being wealthy. Now, I, I've said this on a number of other podcasts before, being wealthy and having eight or nine figure income are two separate things, okay? Wealthy is when you, you know, you're, you, you're able to invest the money that is coming to you and you become you know, more and more wealthy over time and your money works for you and you are a savvy investor. That's a different skill set. Having an income is different. So you could be a movie star. You could have a, you know, one, one uh, song of a song hit. You could have, I don't know, win the lottery. You could have somewhere where your income comes to you. But unless you have the ability to handle your wealth, it's a different category. Do you see what I mean? But we'll discuss, we've discussed a number of other podcasts. We'll do it again. So I'm not going to go into that now. I just want you to understand, doesn't matter what what you're trying to you know trying to create in your life if it is wealth or if it is income or if it is a lifestyle or relationships whatever it may be your self image has to be bigger and being able to you know encapsulate it if you're not able to expand your image and hold your self image in a way that you are this seven figure earner you are this magnificent investor you are this you know you're brilliant at having relationships if you're not able to do that, you will not actually create that in reality. So you may find yourself that you're chasing your tail. Let me give you an example. So if you are currently a multiple six figure owner and you're aiming towards seven figures, but you somehow you never quite hit there. And I, I found that in my own personal life, I was thinking, why was I stuck on multiple six? I couldn't, I couldn't quite hit the seven figures. I couldn't even hit, you know, above, uh, you know, three, four hundred thousand. I couldn't in one particular business. And I was trying to work out why, okay? Because it was easier for me to have wealth in terms of property. It was difficult for me to have hard core, hardcore cash. So it was difficult for me to have that in my coaching business. Once I cracked it, understand why I was stopping myself from having the image of, of being wealthy. Not only did I crack seven figures, I did had eight and now I'm working towards nine as well. And I have my vision on 10 and I'm when, I know when I'm going to get there and how, you know, what I need to do in order to get there. So... The point being, you can get to any level. These are just numbers. At the end of the day, I've said this before, for the universe, for God, for Allah Spandala, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, these are just numbers. It has absolutely no value to, to God. The value is what we place on it. I'm a six-figure earner. I'm a seven-figure earner. I'm eight-figure earner. It's your, your perception of what's right and what's wrong and what's is small and what's large. Universe doesn't care. But the reason why you care is because you have this self-image. Like, I am a six-figure earner. No, I am a seven-figure earner. No, I'm an eight-figure earner. 
You have to expand your image before your income get, can get there. And this is true for all areas of your life. So your self-image has to expand first before your income, your wealth can get there. And this is true for all areas of your life, right? So if I, if I, if I don't believe I can have a healthy relationship, I will self-sabotage all my relationships. If I don't believe I can lose the weight, I will self-sabotage all my you know, uh, diet efforts or whatever the hell I'm doing. If I don't believe that I can get, I can have a successful business, I will self-sabotage on various ways of any, any business that I run. And this actually reminds me of a time when I, you know, now I, I feel like I have the Madai's touch. Whatever business I go into, I, I'm usually, I, so far I learn, I do have a lot of sharp learnings to do, but I end up making a success out of it. And there was a time not so long ago when anything I touched turned to dust. I really believed I was not equipped to become a business person this is obviously during my marriage to my second husband and I was going through a lot of traumas there because this person had made me believe that I was dumb and I'm stupid and I was etc etc et I tried so hard and I worked so hard and I nothing I tried worked absolutely nothing I tried worked the reverse is not true where yes I still have a learning to do and yes I fall of course I fall but I pick up, dust myself off and I, you know, I'll try twice and it won't work. And the third time I will and it will work because I now have the belief that I am smart. I am amazing. I am brilliant. I can, I am a successful business owner that my self image has is off of, of a very successful, very capable business owner. Whatever endeavor I go into, whatever environment I go into, whatever industry I go into, I can make a success out of it. I believe that my self image it keeps me there that I'm so smart. I'm so amazing. I can do this. I inevitably do that, right? So success becomes inevitable. It's failure is just temporary. Success is inevitable because you don't give up. But it, more importantly, because my self image is, I am going to be successful. You know, I may have to learn, you know, I, and in any new industry, when you go into, you have to, there's a sharp learning curve and I'm learning as a goal. So I may fall a few times, but I'm going to be successful because that's now, ingrained into my mindset I may fall and I do fall a lot of the times but I learn and I keep going and I end up finding myself in a, an amazing situation where uh, it amazes me it, it recently and I have to share this that I came across my affirmations I was doing I was putting together affirmations on and my my self-talk things that I say first thing in the morning and last thing at night and I came across something from 2018 and it just really showed me how far I've come because when you're in the trenches, when you're doing the things and you're, you're, you're racing ahead and trying to go to the next goal and doing X, Y, and Z, and me being a full-time mother, my goal has always been around my kids. I remember I just looked at this goal from June of 2018 and my goal in June 2018 was to make 10,000 pounds a month as profit. That's it. 10,000 pounds profit that's that was my goal that was my affirmation and it even says I don't even have the date it's 22nd of June 2018 not that long ago that's five years that's less than five years ago let this um this episode being recorded is being recorded on the 1st of May um in 2023 so this is less than five years ago my goal was to was to to make 10,000 pounds profit a month right and I saw this after just, uh, you know, a week ago where I made in one day, not in coaching another business, I made £165,000 in a space of an hour. It was just through a deal and we were able to negotiate better terms and I had to say, I ended up saving or, or making, whichever way you want to look at it, £165,000 in from two hours work, two hours work, right? And that's just five years ago literally five years ago. So the reason why I'm able to sit here and passionately tell you this, that in order for you to make anything come true, absolutely anything come true, is purely going to be based on your self-image. And yes, I don't want you to have this artificial self-image. You need to, you can go through that. You can you, you can use the you know meditative techniques that from Joe Dispenza or other other people. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love Joe Dispenza. I absolutely love, 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 love Joe Dispenza. I'm a big fan of his. 
But I do believe those techniques are slower because you have to dress the root cause. It's like having splinters in your hand and you're saying, well, my hand's healed, my hand's healed, my hand's healed. Eventually you will get healed, but it will take for those splinters to grow out and for you, for them to fall off. And that can take a long time. Alternatively, if you take tweezers and pull those splinters out and then believe your hand is healed, your hand will heal a lot faster. That's the, that's the difference between leaving the splinters in and allowing them to grow out or actually pulling them out and allowing your hand to heal faster. That's the difference in, in terms of how limiting beliefs are. If you pull them out individually quickly, then you can heal yourself internally a lot faster and you can arrive at your goals a lot faster. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. This is what I'm trying to get for you. This is what I'm aiming for you guys. Okay. So your self image will always hold your wealth hostage. If you do not have a self image that it matches your goals, or has to, actually your self image has to exceed your goals. So if your goal is to make seven figures, you need to have a self image that you can make eight figures. If your goal is to make nine figures, your your self image needs to have. Um, if your if your goal is to make uh, nine figures, your self image needs to get to ten figures. It's simple as that. Your you need to expand your money container a lot more. You need to expand your image a lot more and be ready to accept a lot more than what you are currently aiming for. OK, because that way you will never and you, know, you will always be aiming higher than you, you, you what you desire. So you always will get to your goal. If you aim for lower than your desires, you're never going to get there. This line that I read in psycho and it was you will never, never outgrow your self-image. You know, you, you, in, if you whatever wealth you want, whatever desires you want, you can never outgrow it from your self image if yes if self image is here your growth your money your wealth can never outgrow it it would always be below it so the first thing you want to be doing if you are working in a business if you are working in health if you are working in relationships it doesn't matter which area this this podcast is specifically for money but this rules applies across the board across all areas of your life what Whatever you are working on at this moment in time, you need to work on your self-image first and allow that to expand and grow first before you can get there with ever your manifestations. Now, if you are having difficulty believing that you can get to seven figures, you believe in that you can have the healthy relationship, believing that you can get to that ideal health, weight, goal, whatever you're aiming for, then you need to go back and see, okay, what do I believe that's making me, you know, that I can't do it? What are my limiting beliefs? What's holding me back truly? What stops me from having and holding that self-image that I can accomplish what X, Y, and Z, right? So the first thing you need to be aiming for is having a self-image which is bigger than your current goals. And then if you are if you have difficulty holding on to that image, then you need to go and address what beliefs stop you from holding that image, okay? So that's today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave us feedback. I'm both on YouTube. Uh, if you are watching YouTube, then down below, leave me a comment and I'll come back to you. And if you're watching uh, and if you're listening to us on one of our podcast platforms, then leave us a, a comment and a review and I'll get back to you. Well, until the next time we meet, this is Gul Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.